Day 26. It's been two days now in this farmhouse. We woke up yesterday morning, we realized we had no actual plan for what to do or where to go next. I was sure nobody was coming back to the house because yesterday when I went searching the machine shed in the barn, I, uh, I found the previous owner impaled on a pitchfork. Uh, it looked like he had fallen from the loft and landed on it. It seemed like he had, uh, like he had been there for a while. I told Grace what I found, and while the girls played with a few toys we had brought with us in the house, she helped me pull the pitchfork from him, and we buried him this morning behind the barn. We had to hear any screams or screeches since we arrived and claimed the house, so I think we may stay here for a few more days. It'd be nice to soak up the little moments of peace among all this insanity. Day 28. We saw another car. <laughs> Early in the morning, we were all in the house just trying our best to relax and pretend things were well, somewhat normal. And I heard Grace say it. Shh! You hear that? We sat in silence for a few seconds before I heard it. It was an engine. I ran to the window facing the interstate just in time to see a jeep moving very quickly down the road. At first, I ran to the garage, grabbing the keys to the SUV on the way. I burst through the door, hitting the button for the garage door on my way past and getting into the vehicle. As I started the truck up, I paused. It will be long gone by the time I hit the interstate after him. I think then, shut it back off and I walked back inside. The sight of the Jeep going down the road didn't really help us in any way. However, it did let us know that there are other survivors, other people still out there dealing with all the same things that we were. As I walked back in, Grace stopped me to ask what I'd been planning. I responded, telling her that I was going to try and flag or chase them down. But I thought it through when I changed my mind once I got in the SUV. We let the girls play for a little while as Grace and I talked about the Jeep and what it means to us after talking about it for a few minutes. We came to two conclusions. The first was that the people in the Jeep were long gone by now anyway, and that after my encounter with the janitor at the rest stop, it may be safer to keep to ourselves. Mommy? Daddy? Will you watch a movie with me? Addie interrupted as she came running into the room. Grace and I looked at each other for a second, realizing that our conversation was basically over anyway. Before I answered, yeah, of course, monkey butt. Let me see if I can find a way to make that happen. I got up and I made a trip out to the van to gather some of the DVDs we left in it to keep Addie occupied on long drives while Grace looked through the house for a way to play them. She quickly and easily found out that there was a DVD player in the house's living room. While we sat and watched a movie with our daughter, we heard from the window a sound that we hadn't heard in a few days. And dreaded hearing. It was a deep, guttural screech from a lurker. Grace and I shot each other looks of panic as we got up and we ran around the house to make sure that it was secure. Once we had made sure the house was sealed up, we grabbed the guns and we kept them near as we finished watching Moana for the millionth time that Addie had watched it. Luckily, other than a few more screeches throughout the night, we were able to crowd into the master bedroom again and safely do our best. To fall asleep. Day 29. Daddy, look it! My eyes slowly drift open, noticing Addie pointing to the window of the second floor bedroom. Just as my eyes begin to focus, I notice something strange crawling on the glass. What the fuck? I mumble under my breath, followed by a much more audible, Grace, wake up! Check that out. Grace rolled over and looked towards the window. We both sat in bed in bewilderment, staring at what looked like some sort of gecko making its way across the window. Now, where we live, there's no native wild lizards of any sort. It gets too cold in the winter, and they just can't survive around here, except for maybe in a tank with a heat lamp at someone's pet. 
Now, where we live, there's no native lizards of any sort. It, it gets too cold in the winter. They just can't survive, except for, you know, maybe in a tank with a heat lamp as someone's pet. This one, however, was no normal lizard. It looked alien. Six legs sprouted from the side of its body, three on each side. The skin was translucent, revealing that its insides all had sort of a purple, swirling glow to them. It had four eyes, two on each side of its head, and short black splines ran in a line down its back. What is it with these creatures and the spines? I thought to myself, as I got up to go inspect it closer from the side of the glass. Other than its odd look, it seemed rather harmless. It behaved like any other normal lizard its size would. It didn't seem aggressive. It seemed like it, it was just on the prowl, looking for bugs to eat. I'll admit that the swirling purple glow of its insides were a bit mesmerizing, but my close inspection of the little alien lizard was suddenly cut short when I heard the faint rumble of another engine. I rushed over to the window facing the interstate again and looked out, maybe expecting to see the jeep drive by again, but it was... It was different. This time, it was some sort of small SUV, too far away, and the fog blurred my vision just enough that I couldn't really tell what kind exactly it was. It was heading in the same direction as the Jeep, a different group heading the same place, maybe, I asked myself in the confines of my own head. Hey, what do you say we go investigate off in that direction? This is the second car that we've seen going that way. Do you think they know something we don't? I said, looking at Grace while she handed Addie a small package of mini donuts for breakfast. Uh, I don't know. I think it's safe here for the time being. We have plenty of food to last us for a few more days, she replied. Yeah, uh, okay. Sounds good enough to me, but eventually, we're going to need to find somewhere to resupply ourselves. You know, when we do, I think we should follow the direction of those other cars. I'm going to move the stuff from the van to the SUV, you know, so we don't have to later, I said, as I headed towards the outside door to the van. I walked outside, letting Bodhi come with me so that he could do his morning business. I made multiple trips hauling all our goods and supplies and guns from the van to the house to the garage and into the SUV. On my final trip to grab the sleeping bags and the last of the food, I gathered it all in my arms, and as I walked a few steps towards the house, I paused, noticing that Bodhi was staring off behind me and had lowered his head as he was growling at something. After a few seconds looking and listening, trying to figure out what he was growling at, I started at the back door at a much more hurried pace, yelling, Bodhi, come, behind me. He obeyed and trotted behind me and through the door at the house. As I closed the door behind me, Bodhi stayed at it and began to growl again. When I turned to look back out the door, I saw three of the spider creatures emerging from the field at the edge of the yard. They all skittered up to the van and began crawling all over it, doing what seemed like trying to find a way inside. One of them let out a scream, and Grace came into the back door and stood next to me. Shh, quiet boy, I said to Bodhi. So we watched the creatures swarm the van. They began to strike at the windows, and eventually, they broke one, crawled inside. Holy shit. They're looking for us. Grace said as she watched. Yeah. I think our little sanctuary here in this house has just been cut short. I said to her as I turned and made my way to the garage, putting the remainder of stuff from the van into our new vehicle. When I came back, Grace and Bodhi had both quietly watched the spiders as they crawled all over the van, inside and out. Where are the girls? I asked. In the other room. Izzy's just crawling around, exploring, and Addie's playing with her tablet. I think we need to get in the... I began to say as a blood-curdling screech pierced the air and two lurkers jumped from the field into the yard and began looking around. Shit! I said, slowly realizing that our situation was getting worse by the second. How far is the next town? Grace said as a whisper. I'm not sure. Ten, fifteen miles, maybe? I whispered back. We need to get in the car and go before they start breaking into the house. Okay. Okay, let's hurry. Help me grab the girls and we all get loaded up, Grace said. 
We both quietly rushed into the other room and scooped up the girls. I moved the car seat over to the SUV, but didn't have them strapped in yet. We grabbed what we had brought into the house and what few things from the cupboards we could quickly grab. Each of us took our guns and rushed out to the garage with loaded arms. Grace kept the girls quiet as Bodhi followed me around the SUV, watching me as I strapped the car seats in as fast as I could. Addie's seat was the first, and she began to climb her way into it as soon as I was done. Grace strapped her in while I got the base of the car seat strapped in, and we clicked Izzy into place. Bodhi jumped in from the back and made his way up between the seats over all of our supplies. And just as I clicked the car seat into the base, we heard a window shatter coming from outside the garage. They made it into the house. Grace and I jumped into the vehicle, and just before I hit the button to the garage door, I stopped. Fuck. Fuck. Keys! I said, looking at Grace. I looked out the window and towards the door of the house and took a deep breath. Here we go. I thought as I grabbed my gun and opened the door to get out. Luckily, the keys were just on the counter in the next room. Unluckily, I didn't know how many creatures were in the house or where they were. I stood by the door, breathing heavily in anticipation. I took a big, deep breath. Then just as I was about to swing the door wide open and blast my way into the room, I stopped. What are you thinking? How are you going to get yourself killed? I thought to myself, and instantly slowly creaked the door peering through the slit so I had some idea of where the targets were. Good job, Trevin. Much smarter. My brain said to me. Through the crack, I saw as one of the lurkers had just walked out of the room. There were two of the spiders in the kitchen, and one just happened to be standing on the counter right next to the keys. I looked back at Grace through the windshield and smiled before I opened the door and lifted the gun. Now, there's a reason they call it a hand cannon. The first shot was a direct hit on the spider on the counter next to the keys. The creature essentially exploded into purple gooey mist and viscera as that 50 caliber bullet made contact. It also nearly broke my wrist as the gun kicked with such a force. Two hands, Trevin, two hands, I thought as I raised my other hand to the handle of the gun. Quickly, I aimed at the other spider and careful to focus on my shot without making eye contact with the creature. Second shot, another direct hit, another cloud of exploded spider. I took three steps into the room and ducked past the doorway as the lurker lunged for me. I barely missed and collided with the wall before dropping to the ground and turning to me. Still with no clue on how these creatures navigate with no eyes, I spun behind me and raised the gun to the lurker as the lid on its face slid open and that big needle point posed to strike at me. I fired. Third shot. It was a miss. Kind of. It hit the creature's left horn and blew it off, sending jagged shards of horn into the air. I re-aimed from the recoil and fired again. Fourth shot, almost perfect shot, right in the middle of the beast's head, just as it began to leap at me, and the impact from the bullet decimated the creature's head and it popped like a balloon. Holy shit. I love this gun, I thought to myself as I sprinted for the keys. As I grabbed the keys, I turned around to head back towards the door in the garage. A scream came from the room next to me as the third spider skittered into the room. With keys in one hand, I would have to again shoot this thing one-handed. I quickly raised the gun and shot. Fifth shot. I missed most of the spider, but I did blow off the three legs on one side and took a good chunk out of its side. Purple blood spewed everywhere as the spider spun out back into the other room on the floor. Not sure where the other lurker was, I hurried towards the door. I only had two shots left in the gun, and we needed to get the hell out of there. As I pushed through the door to the garage, I felt talons dig into my back as I was knocked to the ground. I heard Grace scream from the car as I reached back and fired blindly over my shoulder, trying to hit the creature, and I, I missed the lurker, but caused it to jump off me. Just enough for me to roll over, just as it dove on top of me again. This time with talons digging into my chest, I aimed the gun up and fired my final bullet directly into the creature's chest. Its rib cage exploded, covering me in blood and bits of organs as what remained of the lurker slumped down on top of me. The strange purple blood stings as it falls onto my wounds. The recoil from the pistol at this odd angle, I, I was holding it, caused it to fly out of my hand and across the floor back near the door. I pushed the beast's body off of me and scrambled to my feet. I ran to pick up my gun and the keys that I had dropped while I was first struck. Covered in all sorts of things I, I didn't even want to mention, I climbed into the driver's seat and started the vehicle. I'll be fine, I said to Grace as the engine of the big SUV roared to life before she could even ask the question. It's not very deep. She nodded with a look of concern in her eyes. As she hit the button for the garage, tension rises as we sit and wait for the door to move fully up, and I could back out of the garage. And once it does, I put the vehicle in reverse and quickly floor it. 
When I stop to shift to drive, I see more creatures emerging from the field, and we notice the booming footsteps before the shadow of a behemoth forms over the field in the fog. <sighs> oh, relentless bastards, I say out loud as I hit the gas and speed away from the soon-to-be-overrun farmhouse towards the interstate. As soon as the tires leave the driveway and onto the road, a loud roar cracks across the sky from the behemoth. After the few roads and turns it took us to get back to the interstate, we headed off towards the next small town. I hand grace my gun and ask her to reload it while I drive. Who knows what we have to deal with next? And I want to be ready for it. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast. You can find Mr. Creepypasta Storytime on any kind of podcasting platform if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening to the podcast already, you can find Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. <laughs> for those of you that are interested in seeing me do more than just tell scary stories, you can also check me out at twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. During the weekdays around 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I usually stream video games, and sometimes they're Resident Evil, and sometimes they're not. I'm also on Patreon. You can find a whole bunch of other people supporting on Patreon in the description down below, but there is a very, very special thank you to these people in particular. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Creepypasta Adam, Ken Lando Higuchi, Mazakin, Champinsky, The Red Oak Shield Virus, G Weevil 3, Diana Krause, Steven Van Huss, Chance Burton, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Maceo, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, S-Man, Kirisuba, Bad Honey, Someone You Love, Said the King 56, Somber Puppet, Wolfie Nums, Shadow Morningstar, Sean Mills, Jesse Gonzalez, Mad Marshtomp, Z Kearley, Cassie Core, Mr. Thud, and Patrick Schoolmeister. These guys are the real MVPs, and all of you who are listening are also the real MVPs. Stay safe, everyone, and sweet dreams.